If you go down to the woods today, be careful where you pee, otherwise you might get lost. Here are 19 reasons to read The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Dave Musson, at Dave Musson on Instagram, and this is the place where I'm going through the entire bibliography of Stephen King in chronological order and giving you 19 reasons to read each one. If that sounds like something you would like more of, click around the rest of my channel and maybe consider subscribing too so you don't miss any videos in the future. This time we're up to spring 1999 and a little story about baseball, weird wasp gods, and getting lost in the woods. It's the girl who loved Tom Gordon. So I'm gonna jump into 19 reasons to read this little novel. And as always, I will cluster the spoilers towards the end of the video and let you know when they are coming. So if you need to dip out, you can do. But other than that, batter up. Is that a baseball thing? Yeah, let's go with it. Batter up. Here are 19 reasons to read The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. So this started off as King simply wanting to scratch an itch. King loves baseball, particularly the Boston Red Sox, as most people do in Maine, and he had this idea for this story, and his then new publishers decided to go with it, basically to indulge him. But they ended up with this little novel that has become something of a cult hero among constant readers. Yes, it's still a story about a niche sport, and yes, it is a niche sport, but it's also a little bit of a gem. There's something about the genesis of this book that just underlines what a prolific writer King was and still is. He had the idea for this while he was at a Red Sox game, in between having wrapped up Bag of Bones and while working on Hearts in Atlantis. He quite often worked on novellas in between longer pieces of work. If you look at the background for any of the stories in different seasons, they were all birthed into the world between bigger stories. And once the idea for this one grew, well, it just kept going, kept going, kept going until the novel was done. Now, if like me, you don't know anything about baseball and couldn't give a toss about baseball, don't let that put you off. Yes, there are some baseball-y things in this story that might have you glazing over a little bit, but those passages are pretty short. And actually, at the heart of this story, it's a coming of age story and a survival horror story. And at just over 200 pages, King's second shortest novel as it happens, the whole thing just flies by. It's a breeze. So interestingly, King has termed this book something akin to the results of an unwanted pregnancy. That for me is enough of a hook to at least get you curious. So this one has pretty big YA vibes to it. So if you're curious about what King doing YA would look like, this is a good one. And also, if you're looking for a story to perhaps indoctrinate any younger family members of yours into the world of King, this could be a good in. So, what's the hook of this one? Well, we follow nine-year-old Trisha McFarland, who is out for a hike in the woods with her mum and her brother. She steps off the path briefly to go and have a pee, but then gets turned around and gets separated from her family and gets lost in the woods. All she has with her is a little bit of food, a boiled egg, a tuna sandwich, a bottle of water, a poncho to keep her dry, and her Walkman. What then follows is Trisha getting progressively more and more lost in the woods. She's out there for nine days. She begins to get hungry, get thirsty, starts hallucinating, imagines that there's some weird, crazy wasp-faced being called the God of the Lost hunting her, and her only connection to the rest of the world is listening to Boston Red Sox games and her hero, Tom Gordon, via her Walkman. The rest of the story is just us following Trisha and seeing if she can survive. One of my favorite things about this is just the growing dread as you turn more pages. When she first gets lost, it's not that bad. Even her first night out in the woods isn't terribly bad, but the longer she's out there, the bigger the dread gets and the scarier the whole situation becomes. So I'm guessing one of the reasons you're here is for the scares, right? If that's the case, you will love the God of the Lost. As for the question of how King gets on doing YA, pretty well actually, certainly a lot better than The Eyes of the Dragon. So this one actually started off at number two on the bestseller list and then climbed to the top spot and stuck there for 18 weeks 
kind of underlines its status as a grower, not a shower, and a bit of a cult icon. All in the context of being something published by super mega famous author Stephen King, obviously. Also, there is a pop-up version of this book, which I do not own, but I would sincerely love to own. It came out in 2004, and by all accounts, is seriously fucking cool. Okay, we're entering spoiler territory now, so if you need to dip out here, then by all means, please do, and just watch out for any creepy wasp-faced people on the way out, okay? So, back to the God of the Lost, who has a face made of wasps. Turns out he's actually just a black bear, but he is terrifying throughout the book. He rips up vegetation, slashes trees, completely annihilates deer and other wildlife, and he's genuinely terrifying throughout. The fact that we only learn what he really is about 10 pages before the end of a novel just keeps the tension ramped up all the way through. Actually, that sense of ambiguity is one of this book's real strengths. Like, we never really know until the very end exactly what is following Trisha. Is it a bear and she's hallucinating weird shit all over it? Or is there something magical and kooky going on in those woods? It's very cool and keeps you hooked throughout. So Trisha is very resourceful and tough for a nine-year-old, certainly a lot tougher than I would have been as a nine-year-old, but hey, it's fiction, we can accept that. And actually, thinking of the what if this had happened to me scenario just makes it even more scary. Aside from the baseball stuff, which I just don't know about to really understand, the only real weak point for me of this book is that we occasionally leave Trisha to see what's going on with her parents, her family, and the search for her. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I think it would have been more powerful if Trisha had maybe learned those updates through her Walkman, rather than taking us out of the scene altogether. But it's probably still a good thing that Trisha didn't know that her separated parents had had some weird grief sex. So if you've read King before, you probably know the man likes to write about bowel movements and, well, after Trisha eats some stuff that is foreign to her system, let's just say there's only one way that's going to end. The way Trisha finally deals with the beast by throwing her Walkman at it like it's a baseball is kind of weird, but also works. Even for a non-baseball head like me, it did the trick. How strange, some people are walking across the other side of the road and stroking the different plants in all the various gardens. Very weird. Now, the obvious Hollywood ending for this one would have been to have had Tom Gordon rock up in Trisha's hospital room at the end of the book, right, to give her a high five or something. Does that happen? I'll let you find out. Lastly, unusually for King, this one's actually pretty light when it comes to links to other pieces of work he's put out there. Aside from the location, there isn't really much crossover with some of his other stuff. But, Interestingly, it was only a few months after this one was published that King himself was out for a walk in the woods and, well, he didn't get lost, but he did get knocked down by a minivan in a life-changing accident. Bet he wishes he'd just met a bear, really. So there we go, 19 reasons to read The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. Let me know what you think of this slim little novel in the comments below and whether or not it does it for you. If you enjoyed that and you want more, do click around my channel. There's loads more videos for you to explore, 19 reasons to read various books and a few specials as well. And if you enjoyed those videos, maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss any future ones. And if you wanna come and say hi on Instagram, I'm at Dave Musson, always happy to chat King. Not necessarily happy to chat baseball, mainly because I know nothing about it. And I've been to a baseball game. Thanks as always for stopping by. Do come back soon and uh, make sure you don't stray too far from the path next time you're out. Take care.